Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier and welcome to fully understanding the 2020 anniversary sale and convention in 8 minutes and 40 seconds. This video is targeted at getting you the most out of this sale and how best use the sale for your own personal benefit. And please also check the description because I'm putting some videos in there. Despite being dated, the information is still solid for additional strategies and tips. Earlier this year, during Invictus, there were some Warbond ways to get larger discounts by exploiting unique Warbond CCUs and you also get LTI. If any of those present themselves during this sale, I'll likely post them immediately to Twitter, giving you a new reason to follow me on Twitter. For example, there was a path to upgrade an LTI Pisces to a blue, to an Eclipse, all the way to a mole, which was about $120 less than a standard standalone mole. I want to put out a huge disclaimer and this might sound negative or salty, but if it saves one person from making a bad choice, I feel that it's worth it. The project progress in general has been slow. I love Star Citizen, and I know that we know that the project needs constant funding or it'll fail. I don't personally feel as if CIG is doing everything that they could do to preserve the core passage of information and especially combined with that slow pace, some people may worry about its future. They have actually stopped putting real dates to real goals, and I believe that waiting 8 plus months for a roadmap is just another piece of that larger trend. It's clear that the game isn't going to launch this year or the next, and the only guarantee with CIG is that there will always be a new sale, which is actually a relief. And remember that whatever's donated to the project will be spent immediately. You're not getting your money back. What you may want right now will be on sale again and again and again, so don't feel stress or pressure to buy this year at this sale. That mini rant is complete, so let's take a detailed look at the sale. This year's anniversary sale is underway and will end on the 2nd of December. By going to the convention center on Microtech, you're able to rent and test as part of this free fly event. Like last year, the daily event is kicked off by an intro video in Top Gear style, hosted by Jax McCleary, and then you have a themed convention and themed sale for the next 24 hours. There are very limited ships that are being sold in three waves per day. One ship per account, first to check out, is the first to receive. Wave 1 is 8pm Pacific Time Zone, Wave 2 is 4pm Pacific Time Zone, and Wave 3 is 12am Pacific Time Zone. Day 1 was the Pioneer, Day 2 is the Iterus P, Iterus Aftermarket Kit, and the Javelin. The 24th of November is the Hull E, the 25th of November is the Drake Kraken, the Kraken Privateer, and the Aftermarket Kit. The 27th is the 890 Jump, and the 28th will be the Polaris and the Constellation Phoenix. If you're new here, there's something also very unique about this time of year having to do with the insurance. Unlike regular 3 or 6 month insurance, an anniversary standalone ship or anniversary game package comes with longer periods of insurance. 120 months is the new norm, which is 10 years. Some of the best minds in the verse have calculated that this is as good as LTI. So for my first piece of advice to you, if you have a standalone ship or a game package with 6 months insurance, now might be a great opportunity to melt it and buy something else as an anniversary edition. There are cases where it might actually make sense to melt and rebuy a ship during the sale, but there's a huge caveat. And this is that you may be forced to spend real money or need to pay more than you originally bought for. Most ships have gone up in price over the years. Perhaps yours is an older version that is cheaper. Perhaps your older version has some additional perks such as skins or other things. As I said, ask questions, we're here to help. So here we go with the lightning round rundown of what you can expect to see on what days. Most of these ships I actually have videos for that you can search for. So we start on day one, which is the 20th in the past tense, which was Consolidated, Argo and Greycat. None of those ships were particularly rare, but here is the Nomad, which was launched and is available as a game package with lifetime insurance for $80 until the 2nd of December. That's pretty cheap actually, considering the game package is included and the ship is strong. You need to pay 80 with fresh money. However, if it was your plan to buy a second ship anyways, and your current ship has 3 or 6 months, consider the Nomad, then melt what you have, and use that credit elsewhere during the sale. And I'd like to say once again, just in case it wasn't clear, that during the sale, all ships that are available come with 10-year insurance. That day, you also had the Mustang series of Alpha, Beta, Delta, and Gamma, plus the Nomad, as I said. The Pioneer base building ship was sold out in seconds in 3 waves, for Argo, the MPUV cargo and troop mover, plus the mole mining ship. The SRV tow truck is future flyable and was also available. Greycat had the golf cart and the rock mining buggy, both are usable in game. 
Day 2 is the 21st of November and dedicated to Aegis. The Titan Starter, Stalker Bounty Hunter, Renegade Starter, and Warlock EMP ships are all available. Both Gladius Light Fighter variants and both Saber Medium Fighter variants. The four Vanguard Heavies, which are the Hoplite Dropship, the Vanguard Heavy Fighter, the Sentinel EW Ship, and the Harbinger Bomber. The Super Cheeky Eclipse Stealth Torpedo Bomber and the Flying Fortress Retaliator Bomber, plus the Reclaimer and the Hammerhead. They're also selling the Nautilus Mine Layer, the Redeemer Gunship, and the Vulcan Utility Craft, which are all future flyable. And don't forget, the 21st had your chance to pick up an Iterus or Javelin. 22 November is Sunday, and that's Anvil Tough, with many of them being flight ready. The Arrow Light Fighter is actually great. The Ballista is a land based SAM. The C8 is a great starter runabout. I hope to see at least six of the seven Hornets available. The Gladiator Bomber is pretty dated and in need of an update. The Hawk Bounty Hunter, the Hurricane, and the most versatile dropship in the game, the Valkyrie, are all available. The Terrapin Armored Recce Science ship is available, and the crowd favorite, Carrick. Unflyable is the Crucible Repair Craft, and there's no F5 battle planned for that day. The 23rd is Monday, and this will be Crusader, Tombrel, and Kruger. Let's get the easy ones out of the way first. The P-52 and P-72 snubs are both flight ready, and Tombrel has Cyclone buggies, which are released, and the Tonk, which is not. Crusader has the newly released Mercury Star Runner, which I've said many times is a truly viable competitor to the Connie series. In the not flight ready category is the Starlifter series, but I believe we'll see them pop up on the roadmap very soon. No F5 battles that day. The 24th is Misk, and we will have a battle for the massive Hull E, which is limited. The rest of the Hull series ranges from A to D, with A being similar to the Lancer in capacity and D being truly massive. The Lancer series was broken down in a history video, which is linked up to you right now. There's also the newly updated Reliance series of Kor, Tana, Sen, and Mako. That's another video that's in the description. You have both Starfarer fuel platforms, three Razor racers, and although the Prospector is usually available, it will now have 10-year insurance during the sale, making it a good time to melt and buy again. Getting near the end, the 25th is Drake. You can expect to wait for the Krakens to be sold in limited numbers. Drake is wide-ranging with the Buccaneer Light Fighter, the Herald Data Runner, the Cutlass series of three ships, which also has a full history video linked up. The Caterpillar is flight-ready and waiting on modularity, as well as the Dragonfly. But the Corsair Exploration Ship and the Vulture Medium Salvage Platform are still waiting future development. 26 is all about alien craft from Mapoa, Esperia, and Banu. No F5 battle today, but you can pick up a Nox Speeder or a Jian Scout, which are both flight ready, or the San Tokai for when it's made flight ready. Today you can get a Defender, Medium Fighter, or the long awaited Merchantman. Esperia make human replicas of alien ships and will sell the new Talon variants, the Prowler Dropship, and the reproduction Vandal Blade and Vandal Glaive. The 27th is Origin, and you can do battle for an 890 jump as it's sold in limited waves. Origin has the 100 series of starters, the 300 series starters, the 600 series yachts, the 85X runabout, the M50 racer, and in the unreleased category, we have the X1 bikes and the G12 buggies. Next is the 28th and RSI. The Polaris and Phoenix are both being sold in waves. The Aurora series, the Constellation series, the Mantis Interdiction Craft, and the Ursa are all flight ready. You can also pick up an Apollo Ambulance or an Orion Mining Platform. Neither of those are flight ready. After that, all the way until the second is basically being called the best of show, allowing you to pick up anything that you missed. And that's about it. I remind you to ask questions if you have them and to enter this month's contest for four ships totaling over $1,000. Stay tuned for more, fly safe, and I'll see you in the verse.